On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1977. We're going to be having a listen to Jimmy Buffett, and he's going to be singing Margaritaville. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. So I did receive a lot of emails asking for this particular analysis video on Jimmy following the sad news that he passed away recently. And on the most recent live stream to when that news broke, I did mention that here in the UK, we don't really know Jimmy's music at all. And he didn't release any albums here. It was all over in the USA, in Canada. And it means that I can listen to this song and analyze it probably in quite a unique way because I'm not familiar with him as, as a singer, as an artist, and just before listening to this a couple of times, setting up the video, I hadn't heard this song before. So I have isolated the vocal and run it through the pitch monitoring software. As always, there's a link in the description below if you wanna to listen to it the whole way through without me interrupting it because I am gonna be jumping into it, but let's have a listen. <laughs> Nibbling on sponge cake Watching the sun bake All of those tourists covered with oil Strumming my six string On my front porch swing Smell those shrimp they're beginning to boil Wasting away again in Margarita Bay Searching for my lost sugar salt Some people claim that there's a woman to blame But I know it's nobody's fault Don't know the reason I stayed here all season Nothing to show but this brand new tattoo But it's a real beauty A Mexican cutie How it got here I haven't a clue Wasting away again in Margarita Bay Searching for my lost shaker of salt Some people claim that there's a woman to blame Now I think Hell it could be my So I'm just going to jump in here. We've got a bit of an instrumental break going on. And I mean, I'm not surprised that Jimmy was huge because <laughs> just listening to this song, you can't help but, I mean, smile because of the way it's delivered, but also the subject of the song, the lyrical content and you know, talking about things like that, getting a tattoo and <laughs> not remembering kind of how he got it but you know he likes it all the same but his vocal delivery i mean there's so much especially to my ear being from the uk there's so much country in there like the fundamental part of his vocal sound includes things that you would have that would really be at the forefront of folk and country music and telling a story but telling the story in such a way that it's so relatable because he's delivering it in that that talking way I mean we're not you know hitting you know b4s and c5s here and belting and chest voice it's very much that storytelling style in that range that just sounds like somebody talking have a listen to not only of course the delivery but look at the accuracy with which he is hitting these notes 
on the right hand side. Check it out. Nibbling on sponge cake. Straight off the bat, we are as accurate as you can be really on the A3. And we, we've just got these two notes of the A3 down to the G3, but absolutely spot on. And I know that people relate to this to, you know, maybe holiday time, maybe summertime, but surfing and all that kind of stuff, just relaxing, chilling out and, you know, having a margarita on the beach. And let's get back to the vocal. The accuracy in the vocal throughout is something that you will notice. And it's not something that you would necessarily expect because of the way that he's singing this. Watching the sun bake. All of those tourists covered with oil. I mean, even here, going up to the B3, the A3 spot on, B3 spot on. And when I said about the bass, listen out for that, because we've got this bounce from the fifth to the root note, and it gives it that that bounce, that movement the whole time. So if the bass was just going straight, then obviously it's going to sound more regimented and it isn't going to quite give it the lift. So we'll listen through now with the instrumentation. Listen for the bass. Strumming my six string. You will hear that. It's constantly bouncing between the ah, which is, you know, the root note of, of the chord, and going nah, and that's the fifth. So that's what I mean about bouncing from the fifth to the root note, because sometimes we're starting on the fifth and coming down, but we've all always got this movement. So it gives the overall composition just a more relaxed feel because we're moving all the time. We're not just regimented down the middle, just a, a bass line going bum, 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 and just you know, hitting a root note the whole time. So we've got little bounces going on. Occasionally you'll hear an extra note coming in there, maybe a third before the fifth, very subtly, but it's always got this bounce. Importantly, this is what we have in country music all the time is especially when you're playing fingerstyle on guitar, you'll have the bounce down from your C down to the G, for example. When I say about that movement and playing fingerstyle, hopefully you can hear that. Yeah, you know, the bounce that I'm doing with my thumb. And in country music, you'll get this all the time, especially with the C shape, which I'm playing with the cap on the second fret. So this is a D technically, but is jumping over to what would be your G, you know, in standard tuning. Uh, in this case, it's an A. So we've got this, that little skip over. So by having that little skip over, it means that obviously that bass line is being given to you on the guitar and that movement we've got on the bass here. So it's something that you'll find in country music all the time where you've got this running bass line happening that's that's always on the move. When you listen to his vocal as well, just by itself, you can hear even more of this country twang in there. On my front porch swing, smell of shrimp there begin at the bar. Wasting away again in Margaritaville Searching for my lost sugar song For some reason it engages the ear more because the voice is interesting like even just the spoken word in this voice would be interesting to listen to because it's a different accent and I'm speaking obviously here from a UK perspective. You can imagine the personality of the person having gone through what he's singing about. So it really adds authenticity to the performance. And that's, that is such a rare thing to have in a vocal, the authenticity where you believe that this has actually happened, that he did go and he got a tattoo and he can't remember what happened because it just sounds like that kind of person is singing it. So, I mean, I mean, there's a real art form in that that will obviously fly under everyone's radar because you just connect to the song and enjoy it. Some people claim that there's a one to blame, but I know. 
<laughs> I love that kind of thing. That uh, G3 and the way that it's kind of, mm, but I know, and, and he's kind of going down and he's, he's not really sounding like he's bothered where he's ending, but mm, no, 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 he's, uh, you know, he's, we, we can see here down to the A2, like an octave below where he's just been. It's just really natural. It's nobody's fault. No, <laughs> I can't do American accents, but I mean, just in no there. I mean, there's so much just in that one word with the accent. Don't know the reason. And again, locked in immediately on that A3. Stayed here all season. And even there, I mean, I don't want to go through this literally word by word. Stayed here all season. He's actually going, stayed here all season. So he's sliding up twice, sliding down. And he's, he's nailing all of these pitches. So, I mean, it's, it's a really quick phrase that, but he's got all of the expression in the slides and just nails every note. And of course the last note it is always gonna be the most important one because that's what you're left with remembering after the vocal line. If it's wrong, it's gonna stand out more, but he always nails it. Stayed here all season Nothing to show but this brand new tattoo Again, that, that, that accent, nothing to show. <laughs> I can't do it. But yeah, it just sounds really cool. And talking about this tattoo, uh, again here, this A3, he's hit it bang on, but we still get this expression at the end, which, you know, um, you can say technically here is a little bit flat of the A3, but this is the point that we've got that all left in there. It's not pitch correct, it's not auto-tuned. So this is why it still sounds like a guy just telling a story. But it's a real beauty. And you get to appreciate those harmony vocals in the background where he's supplied those himself. You can hear that this is Jimmy's voice. I'm Mexican cutie. How I got here, I haven't a clue. And the intervals and the harmonies are absolutely spot on as well. And that's another interesting thing is that we don't really get a lot of vibrato, which again is going to make it more like listening to a story uh, when you're listening to somebody telling you a story. Or if you're listening to somebody reading a book, they don't read a book with vibrato <laughs> at the end of their lines. So this is why this is just a perfect, perfect overlap from telling a story and singing. And you will hear in tiny sections, a little bit of vibrato, but it is minimal. Searching for my lost sugar song. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame. Now I think, hell, it could be my ball. I blew out my flip flop, stepped on a pop top. Cut my heel, had to cruise on back home. There we go. So we had a little bit more vibrato here, A3. And this second one was, yeah, maybe a little bit more noticeable because it wasn't part of that first vocal phrase. But just have a listen because, again, it's adding it in there. So it's obviously making it more musical, making it sound like singing. But... It is so subtle that it doesn't overpower the phrase. Cut my heel, had to cruise on back home. It, it's almost like a hum, back home, and then a little wobble like that, just before the, the line finishes, rather than back home, you know, kind of doing something that would just sound weird, <laughs> because it'll be too much singing. A blender. And soon it will render that frozen concoction that helps me hang on. Searching for my lost sugar saw. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know. 
It's my own damn fault. You said some people claim that there's a woman to blame, and I know it's my own damn fault. And there we have it. But what I'm going to do is bring back in the instrumentation so that we can get a little bit from that because you'll hear that bass moving the whole time. But listen to the amount of other instruments we've got going on. Some people. And listen out for that xylophone, you know, just giving it that kind of summer holiday feel. And listen to how those melodic hooks always fall in that gap. We have the vocal, we have a melodic hook. I mean, I could literally listen to this all over again, and I probably will do after this video, but just to have a listen to the way that this has been arranged. Nibbling on sponge cake. Really subtle in the beginning. We've got this organ sound in the right channel that is just going, na 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 na. You know, just plays a little fill, just a couple of notes. But it's enough to just fill in that sound between the vocal. Watching the sun bake. Exactly the same, different fill this time, right hand side. All of those tourists covered with oil. So, I mean, it's a great example of, to begin with, keeping your attention with something that's really subtle because you don't want this to be really in your face because we've only just started the song. You've got to leave yourself somewhere to go, not only instrumentally, but dynamically. You want something soft and quiet that's, that's keeping your attention. So then as you progress, you can then start to make it more obvious and start to maybe bring in another instrument that's going to take even more focus in between these lead vocals. So again, it's like giving you that focal point of the lead vocal, at which at the beginning of the song is going to be arguably softer and you want that other lead instrument whatever it may be in this case it's kind of that light organ sound you want that to be on the same page and speak from the same place as the lead vocal when it comes in just to take your attention Strumming my six string. Uh and if you're listening to this in headphones you'll be able to hear this in your right ear the, the keys that are being played that organ on my front porch swing Hello shrimp there begin at a bar Wasting away again in Margarita Bill And you just heard the xylophone a little bit more in that tiny gap. I mean we're kind of delving more into production here, but it is great the way that you can hear that Everything has been given its space. Searching for my lost sugar song. And now you start to realize more instruments are now getting involved in these spaces. So again, we're building this journey. We're gradually introducing more instruments and they're becoming a little bit more prominent in these gaps. But again, it's not overly taking your focus away from the vocal. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's nobody's fault. Don't know the reason. I mean, and there you've got your melodic hook at the end of what you know, would be classed as the chorus. So uh, that's then telling you Especially the way that we're descending, we've got this na 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 na. You know, we've now kind of resolved because we're going back into the verse. We're all starting, yeah, starting again. So musically, our ear is being told what's happening uh, because we are coming back down. And when I say about climbing the mountain, you know, it, towards your chorus and then you know the crescendo of the song, it's always going to be in your chorus. So we've climb to the top of that mountain for the chorus and now 
we've started to come down at the end of the chorus and why are we coming down the mountain because we're starting at the verse again because then we're going to go up we're starting the journey again before we get into the the next chorus you know we've got the verse and then we go up into the chorus so it's tiny details like this just making a journey out of a song but a lot of this is to do with production and you know melody and, and picking notes and playing runs that aren't taking you to a place that's irrelevant because the last thing you want to do there is when it's all being brought back down to the verse you don't want to build people up into a frenzy so it feels like you're about to you know hit the peak of the mountain hit the crescendo but then all you have is na 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 and then it goes to that it's like oh hang on yeah it wouldn't really make sense this does because the music is taking you to a place emotionally that makes sense uh, for yeah the whole song and the story of the song so yeah i know that we're kind of getting into details here but it's great to listen to how this has been pieced together because on the face of it it sounds like a really simple song but there's so much that goes into it to give you that impression because it's not simple, like from a production side of things, from the instruments, we've got quite a lot of instruments going on here. From the vocal perspective, the accuracy, the, the pitch, keeping it in that storytelling kind of space, but keeping all of that quality in there, the harmonies as well. So there's so much going on here. It sounds simple, but that's the illusion. And that's what, yeah, a, a great set of instrumentalists and a great artist uh, can do, that they, they make it sound really simple. But it's a really interesting one to jump into because it's a sound and an artist that I wasn't familiar with previously. So again, thank you guys for requesting this one for tonight. I hope you did enjoy it and I'll catch you guys at the next one.